Hey everybody, how's it going? In this video, we're going to be customizing our terminal and changing the colors of our prompt. Now to do this, we're going to be modifying our bash RC file here. If you haven't watched my previous video explaining the difference between the bash underscore profile and the bash RC files and where they belong, then you should go ahead and check that video first. But with that said, let's go ahead and get started. So right now I currently have my terminal open, which is an uncustomized terminal just from scratch. And I also have my bash RC file opened up in Sublime Text here. Now in order to customize my prompt, I'm going to edit the PS1 variable. And we saw this a little bit in the last video. Um, so first let's just do something extremely simple here. So I'm gonna do PS1 equals, and I'm just gonna do an arrow and then cut that off and save it. And right under here, I'm also going to export this PS1 variable and close that off and save it. And also notice that I put a space here after this arrow, and that's just to give us some space so that our text isn't bumping right up against that. So now back here in our terminal, we could either quit out of terminal and open it back up and see those changes, or we can do something called source, and then we'll just source that bash RC file. And what that's going to do is it's going to go in and rerun the bash RC file and it should pull in all those changes. So now you can see when I source that file that I now have this new prompt here, which is what we set the PS1 variable to. So that's a good start. We could come in here and we could, um, you know, add in some static text, uh, whatever we wanted it to be. And anytime we save it and then resource that file, now you can see that we have our static prompt here. But most likely, we're not going to want our prompt to be static. Um, we're not just going to want to have the same text uh, all the time. It would be nice to have some dynamic information in there, like uh, like who we're logged in as, what machine we're on, uh, or what directory we're currently in. So in order to add information like this to your prompt, you can use special escaped characters that represent this information. Uh, so for example, one of these special characters is the uh, backslash u. So I'm gonna leave the arrow in there and just do a backslash U before that arrow. And now if I save that and source the bash RC file again, now you can see here that my username is before the arrow. So now we have some dynamic information that we're using as our prompt. So the backslash U represents the username of the current user, but there's also some other special characters that we can use here as well, and I have a couple of them written down. Uh, so backslash H uh, is the host name up to the first dot. The backslash N is a new line. Uh, backslash S is the name of the shell. Backslash T is the current time. Uh, there's the backslash U that we've already seen. Uh, the backslash lowercase w is the current working directory and the backslash uppercase w is the base name of the current working directory. So let's say that you wanted to customize your prompt to look something like this. Maybe you want to do the username uh, and at the host name and then a space and then the directory and then we want our arrow in for the prompt. So I'm just going to push this over here to the side and let's go ahead and change this uh, PS1 variable to match what we want here. So backslash u will be the username. And now we want an at sign, so we'll just type that in. And now we want the host name, so we can do a backslash h. And now we want a space and then the directory. Now for the directory, we have two choices here. We can do a lowercase w, which will print out the full path, or the uppercase w, which will only print out uh, the base name of the working directory that you're in. So if you're in uh, your home directory slash desktop, it's only going to print out desktop. And that's usually the one that I like because it takes up less space. So I'm going to go ahead and put in a uh, capital W there. And then let's put in a space there and save that. And now let's go back to our terminal and uh, source this file and see those changes. So now you can see that our custom prompt has our username at and then the name of the computer that we're logged into and then a space and then the base name of our directory and we're in our home directory now. So if I was to CD to the desktop and now you can see that it has the desktop there. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and CD back into my home directory. 
Okay, so now this is looking pretty good. We've uh, customized it in a way that we want, um, but it's still pretty boring. It would be nice to add some color in there. Um, so let's go back to our bash RC file. Now there's a couple of different ways in which we can add color, and we'll look at a few of those options in a later video. Uh, but right now we're going to only use a command called tput. Now I'm not going to go too much into the syntax that Bash uses here. Uh, we could do a whole series on videos on Bash scripting, uh, but for this walkthrough I'm just going to show you what we need to do in order to get our colors working within the prompt. So in Bash we can do something called a command substitution uh, with a dollar sign and parentheses here. And if we put a command inside of these parentheses, uh, then what that's going to do is it's going to give us the result of that command and uh, replace the dollar sign and parentheses with the result of that command. So it may uh, make more sense to see an example here. So if I go back to my terminal and I type in echo and then I echo out your current directory is and then I do the dollar sign parentheses now for the command I'm just going to type in PWD here for a print working directory command now if I run this you can see that what it echoed out uh, was your current directory is and then printed out the uh, result of the PWD command so that's what this command substitution does it takes a command and it replaces uh, all of this with the result of that command so what the tput command does is it can change the foreground text color. Uh, so we can use that same technique, and if we put that command uh, before some text, then it will apply color to that text. So for example, if I was to do echo, and then I was to do our command substitution here, and I was to do tput, and then set af, which uh, sets the foreground color, and then I'm just going to do a color value of 166, and then outside of that command substitution, I'm just going to put in some text, uh, this is orange. So if I run this command, then it should echo out, uh, this is orange, and apply orange text to it. Now, if you're wondering where I got the number uh, 166 for that color of orange, uh, you can do a Google search for a 256 color chart uh, and get results. So, for example, uh, if I pull up the Chrome page that I have open up here, um, so I did a Google search for a 256 color chart, and uh, this is the Wikipedia page for that. Now, if we go down here to 166, then you can see that it matches that orange that I just printed out. So if you do use the tput command, um, then you can choose the colors that you want to use from one of these charts here. Okay, so that is an example with the echo, but what if I applied this to my prompt? Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and copy this tput command that I just used, and I'm going to put this same command right before the backslash u on our ps1 variable. So I'm going to put that in there and save that and I'll get rid of this text down here. And now I'm going to go back to my terminal here and do a source on the bash rc file. Okay, so you can see that it worked and it applied it in orange color to the entire prompt, uh, but it also did something a little unexpected. Uh, so if we type in a command, you can see that everything is orange. So all of the commands and the output. Um, that's because we never explicitly said uh, where we wanted the orange color to stop. So to do this, we're going to need to run another tput command that will reset our styles. And the command that we can use to do that, uh, let's see, we can do, actually I'm just going to copy this tput command here and paste it in down here. Now to do this, it is tput and then for the command we can do sgr0. So that will reset our formatting, and what we want to do is we want to add this where we want the orange to stop. So say that I want the orange to stop at the end of the prompt, then I'll just go ahead and paste that in there. And if I save that with the reset at the end, now if I come over here and I source the bash file again, now if I type in commands, then my commands and the output should uh, be the default color and the prompt is still the color that we just now gave it. Okay, so this is good so far, but uh, let's add a couple more colors uh, in into the prompt here. So let's say that I want to make this host yellow and the current directory green. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to go ahead and make this a little bit bigger here. 
so that I can fit in some more values. Now to make these different colors, I'm just going to copy this T put command here. So we just want to put the color uh, before what we want to be that color. So I have this T put command here and it's going to be orange until we either reset it or change it. So right after the username, I'm going to paste in another T put command. And I want this one to be yellow and I looked up all these colors beforehand. So the yellow that I want is going to be 228. Now I'm going to po paste another one uh, before the directory here. And I want this one to be green and the green value that I'm going to use is 71. And now I also want to leave this reset value in here so that the green doesn't leak over into our commands and our output. So I'm going to go ahead and save that and open back up the terminal here and run a source on that bash RC file. And let me go ahead and clear the screen so we can see a little bit better. And now you can see here that our terminal prompt is exactly how we want it to look. We have our username is orange, our computer, that our host name that we're on is yellow, and then our directory is green. So if I was to CD in the desktop, then you'll be able to see that a little bit better. So this is starting to look good and it's starting to look um, how we want it to be customized. But you can see here that our PS1 command, it's starting to get long and hard to read and also hard to maintain. So really a technique that some people use is to break this up. So uh, if you do a PS1 equals and then uh, whatever it equals here, you can also do a PS1 plus equals and it'll keep on appending to that variable. So really what I can do is I can do one of these values at a time and just do them line by line. So if I want my username information here, now I'm going to go ahead and grab the host information here and cut that out and paste it in down here and I'm going to put in the semicolon. And now I'm going to create a, another line here and end that off with the semicolon. And now I'm going to go ahead and grab this next command which is our current directory and the arrow. So let me cut that out of there and paste it in. And now lastly, I'm going to do one more line of this PS1 variable and end that out with the semicolon. And I'm just going to grab this reset command here and cut that out and then place it in here. And you can see how now this is a little bit more manageable in what's going on. And you can also leave yourself comments here. So if I was to leave a comment where I could say, uh, orange user and then another comment down here that is uh, yellow host and you get the idea so you can just kind of comment it and so that you can keep traffic track of exactly what's going on so now just to make sure that that worked I went ahead and saved it and let's go ahead and resource our bash RC file and let me clear this out so that we can see a little bit better and also I'm going to CD back to our home directory uh, so now I'm going to try to source that bash RC file. Okay, so you see that we kind of ran into an issue here where uh, it's the cursor position is acting up. Uh, now the reason for that is that we need to wrap our commands with these special escape characters so that the uh, so that bash knows how to properly handle the cursor and these look like this right here. So uh, we have a backslash and then a bracket and then uh, after our command we're going to have a backslash and an end bracket. So I'm going to copy this here and before every t put command I'm going to paste that in. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab this ending one here and copy that. And then after every T put command, I'm going to paste that in. Then I'm going to go ahead and delete this here and save it. Now I know right now this might seem like a lot to remember, uh, but uh, just stick with me. We're going to be uh, learning about a few things that makes all of this stuff a lot easier to work with. Okay, so now if I open back up my terminal and I run that source command with the... Uh, that was kind of the weird cursor position there. Uh, but now with those escape characters in, uh, if I was to retype that out, then I shouldn't have those issues anymore. So you can see that uh, now it's working like it should be. So to finish up here, uh, the way that my prompt is usually set up and the way that you've probably seen it look in other videos is very similar to this here. So let me go ahead and grab some code that will make it look exactly like it does in my other videos. So I'm going to grab this information here and copy that and I'll go ahead and minimize that and I'm just going to paste this into our bash RC file. 
So let me kind of explain what's going on here. Uh, and again, I apologize for not going too in depth on the syntax here, but for the sake of time, I just want to show you how mine is set up and we'll look a little further into the syntax in a future video. So first of all here with the PS1 variable, you can see that now we have this new thing where we're putting in these words instead of uh, T put. So what that's doing, um, so instead of putting the T put statement every time you want to use a specific color or the reset, you can instead uh, specify a variable that's easier to remember. So for example here, I can do orange equal to that T put command, yellow equal to this one, now this is one that we haven't seen yet, this bold here, we can do a T put bold. And then also we have our reset command. And then when we want to use one of these values, what we can do is when we do our PS1 equal to, and then there's those escape characters that we we're talking about, the backslash bracket, and then we have the closing bracket here. And now instead of a command substitution, we're substituting in these variables. So instead of a parentheses, that is now a brace. So what I'm doing here is I'm saying that I want everything beyond this to be bold and I'm going to start off with a new line here and then on the new line adding to our PS1 command or variable still uh, I'm saying that I want this to be orange with the backslash username and then on the next line I'm saying that I want uh, to say space at and I want that to be white and then yellow with the host and then another white with an in statement there and then the green working directory and then finally a new line at the end and then a dollar sign that is white and then I do a reset on all of the formatting. So I know that looks like a lot but let me save that and then go back to the terminal here and now if I source that file again then this probably looks a little familiar if you've seen any of my other videos. Uh, this is how I have my prompt set up. So if all that you want to do is customize your prompt uh, with the wording and the colors, then you can go ahead and play around with commands like this and setting the PS1 and exporting the PS1 variable. Uh, but there's really a whole lot more that you can do with your customizations. Um, so that's going to go ahead and do it for this video. Um, but uh, I want to do some future videos on something called dot files. Now dot files are basically the files that we've already been looking at. So the dot bash underscore profile and the dot bash RC file. Now there's several other files just like that uh, that we haven't quite gone over yet. But now that we've seen some of the basic commands that we can use within these dot files, uh, so for example, what we've done to the dot bash RC file over here, now that we've seen some of the things that we can do within these files, in the next video, we'll download some of the dot files that other people have put up on GitHub and look at some of the functionality that other people have managed to squeeze into their dot files. And it can be extremely powerful the way that they've done this. So be sure to check out that video and we'll take a look at some of those dot files that are popular online and we'll see how we can set up a git prompt and git auto completion and uh, color codes for fallback values like if, uh, if we don't have these t put values available then we can use different values and really all kinds of stuff. So we'll just download some of those files and look through them and see exactly what's going on. But hopefully in this video, uh, we gave everyone a basic understanding of how we can modify the bash RC file uh, to customize our terminal. Uh, but if you do have any questions uh, specifically with this video, just ask in the comment section below. Be sure to subscribe for future videos and uh, thank you all for watching.